how do you pick the best platform or partners, platform or technology partners? What do you look for in a good partner? Yeah, I think we were just touching on that a little bit. You, you want to make sure it's got all of the attributes that you, that you want. And um, when we were looking at liquid handling robots, that was probably a good example of uh, a while back. You know, do they have X, Y, and Z? And not everything, you know, they didn't align. There wasn't something that would do all of the above. Sometimes they, they couldn't grab the, the extra head. They didn't have the ability to, to interface with the plates. And so then you said, all right, you know, what, what parts do we give up? What are the, what, what pulls in there? And so I think then you have to really look and say, you know, what's our current need? What's our future need? How are we going to do this? Um, certainly in some places we said, all right, we're going to buy this machine and then we're going to buy this other one short, shortly thereafter. Um, and one of the things we haven't quite talked on yet is size. And that's you know something that one needs to think about a little bit once you get to the, the bigger automation. Um, and, and so in that, in that particular instance, we, we never did get the second machine. So it was good that the first one was able to do all the tasks that were planned, uh, even if it wasn't quite uh, as adept at the second set, um, because we, due to uh, you know just the uh, size constraints in, in those early days of the company, we, we couldn't quite get uh, a full room for this. Um, and, and so I think that the you know I think this is all part of this uh, continuum that we're talking about, just you know, looking for a best fit and uh, kind of future proofing as much as possible. Thanks, TJ. Matt, anything to add there? Sorry. Uh, yes. So I think identifying the right partner for me has changed a bit over time. You know, um, in my very first system, like I was 100% reliant on the vendor, and I kind of sat back tried to learn as much as possible and like cross my fingers most of the time, hoping it all worked out, <laughs> you know? So, you know, nowadays uh, with, you know, my experience and uh, the experience of my team, you know, we essentially just send them a list of stuff that we want, where we want it, and then just say, how fast can you get it to us? Um, so, you know, it really changes a lot. And I think having a partner that's willing to um, work on any end of that spectrum is really not only important, but also telling in terms of like their confidence of their own ability and their own product. Um, so having somebody that's willing to really co-develop and hand off in a state that meets your particular team's needs for wherever you are on that kind of journey is, is really critical. You know, of course you have like specific requirements for, uh, you know, does their system talk with the specific limbs? Does it work in a regulated environment? Uh, will it physically fit in the space? Um, but for the most part, you know, there's, uh, the right vendor in my opinion will be able to paint a clear picture and like connect all those dots for you to the point that you're able to like start your science. You know, a lot of times they will jump out and say, once we sell it to you, it's all yours, or they'll refuse to help too much with a certain science or specific device. But, um, you know, I think that's where like a true partner is, is really able to fill in all the gaps for you. Because like, especially on your first few times doing it, there's gonna be a lot of gaps that you don't anticipate. I mean, even after doing this for, you know, 15 years, I still have gaps that I'm like, oh, wow, how did I, how did I oversee that? Uh, or miss, uh, miss see that, so. Um, yeah, I think those are the kind of things that we look at. I think your poll was spot on and, you know, whether we weigh them more or less than what's on the screen, I think those are all the critical factors that we, that we um, think about. Great. So one, one part that's not quite on this list, but I, you know, we, we haven't quite got there was, was an opportunity in addition to automating your internal lab process is to think about, ah, you know, we, we, this is such a scale, but maybe not something we're going to do as, as often as we thought, like a giant screen. Um, and there's been a couple of times where, there were vendors that would do that particular step. So in addition to uh, identifying, you know, downstream of identifying the need, it might not be get the automation in-house, that there are a number of groups that uh, have these capabilities. And you can say, all right, well, this is the process we're gonna send out. Once we've done, in the example I was saying, this high throughput screen, uh, then we can bring it back in-house and, and do, um, you know, the medium three throughput steps and such. So then, um, it's just one more avenue that, uh, particularly early, or when you're when you're doing some steps that are a scale or more above what you're you're doing necessarily your your bread and butter experiments. Uh, but one one could look now, particularly um, through some some good resources, to, to figure out who are automation experts that that you can outsource.